It's not every day that you see a bald eagle fly so low over your head, let alone in the trees just outside your town. But that's exactly what's happening for those who live in a Minnesota city. But it wasn't the presence of the bird that made the sight unusual, but that the eagle was upside down and the boughs, distressed and struggling something had to be done. The bald eagle is a well-known bird and can be found across North America. It has significant symbolism in Native American culture and has been the national bird of America for some time. It was classified as a protected species in 1940, but is now rated at least concern on the International Union for the Conservation of Nature Ekin Red List. There are now more bald eagles in the United States than there were 40 years ago. A few states with a high number of these birds are Alaska, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. So, it wasn't just seeing the bird that surprised residents near Rush City that day. Also, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now, back to the story. Instead, it was the bird hanging upside down from a branch which really shook everyone up. Jason Galvin was on his way to Rush City on June 30, 2016 when he noticed the eagle. A closer inspection with his binoculars showed that its lay head somehow got caught up in a rope wrapped around a branch. Jason initially thought in fact that the bird must be dead, but then he saw it move. Best story of a lifetime, Jason's wife Jackie would later write on Facebook. Jason went to the store yesterday from the cabin and when he came back, he told me there was an eagle at the end of our road, hanging upside down by its foot from a tree branch with rope caught around it. I called the sheriff's office, city hall, Fire Department, University of Minnesota Raptor Center, Department of Natural Resources Conservation Officer, and all the stories were the same, Jackie added. They said it had been there for two and a half days and that there was nothing they could do. Apparently, the couple's neighbors had noticed the eagle too. All the departments gave the same reasons for their lack of action. It either wasn't their jurisdiction or that the risk associated with saving the eagle from such a height was too great. Some of them even told Jackie that the bird was already dead and that the movement Jason had seen had been caused by the wind. The couple had exhausted their emergency contacts and so had come to a dead end. At that point, Jason cracked a joke about shooting the eagle down. His wife, though, thought it was a great idea. Yep, that's what you're going to do, she said. Well, relating the tale to Minneapolis, NBC affiliate Care 11, and the idea wasn't as crazy as it sounded. Jason was a U.S. Army veteran who had served two tours in Afghanistan, so knew his way around a firearm. He was nervous as he didn't want to get in trouble for shooting at an eagle, but I know with his shark shooter skills that if anyone would save this eagle, it was him, Jackie's social media posts read. So, Jason consulted conservation officer Phil Mose, who works for the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. Jason told me he was a veteran in the service and he wouldn't do it if he couldn't do it safely, Moses told Care 11 if it was left alone, the bird would die anyway. So, he gave Jason's plan, the green light. Although Jason had a rifle of his own, his neighbor provided one with a better scope. As a proud patriot, he was taking no chances rescuing a bald eagle. The vet took up the 22 rifle to shoot the eagle free. To do so successfully, he needed to hit exactly where the rope wrapped around the branch. It was windy, and he only had about 4 inches of rope to shoot without hitting the eagle. As he assessed the elements of the weather, he took a couple of practice shots to ensure the sight was on target. It was, he began shooting at the rope. Jackie explained in her Facebook post, against the rising midday sun, the wind, and the odds, Galvin began shooting at the branch and rope that had trapped the bird. It was very windy, and I was just waiting for the right shot. The marksman told Care 11, and after 90 minutes of precision, firing the branch finally snapped. I sat there with the binoculars and I was like, wow, he's an excellent shot. Officer Mose remarked in his CARE 11 interview, the display of accuracy from Marksman Galvin was nothing short of amazing. The long battle took 150 pinpointed shots and high wind, but he finally delivered the bird its freedom from an upside down hanging. The helpless bird, which must have been suffering the effects of its two day ordeal caught in the trees plummeted an estimated 75 feet to the ground. When rescuers ran to the eagle's landing site, though, they found that its fall had fortunately been cushioned by other branches and soft underbrush. 
Jason never once hit the bird. I can't even tell you how amazing this experience was and I knew of all people, my husband wouldn't let me down. Jackie wrote on Facebook. Traumatized, but alive the young eagle was prepped for transport to a medical facility. The eagle was wrapped in a blanket and the Galvins used their dog kennel as a temporary cage so the bird could be moved safely. Officer Mose took custody of the magnificent creature which showed surprisingly healthy reactions considering what it had been through. It rode in the front seat with me and the whole time his head was up and he was alert. It looked good considering it had been hanging there for two days, Moses remarked to Carol Ed. The bird of prey was then taken to the University of Minnesota Raptor Center for a medical checkup and recovery time. What's more, the following day, a veterinarian at the Raptor Center said that the bald eagle was doing well. It was eating and drinking properly, and they were assessing its chances at long-term recovery. They were optimistic, and the Galvins were also hopeful that the bird would be eventually released close to where it had been found. And since the eagle was rescued so close to Independence Day, rescuers appropriately named it Freedom. The 4th of July, you know, that's our bird. I can't let it sit there, Jason told Kara Levin. There were a lot of tears when it finally came down. It was breathtaking. It was a beautiful moment.